Good evening, everyone. It's Andrew Murray here from Generation Builders. Uh, just uh, wonderful to be with you tonight. Wonderful to see you all. Just while we're waiting for some more people to come online, I just want to encourage you, as we always do, to go to our website, generationbuilders.org, and you can see all our events and online courses and resources, all the things that we provide as a ministry. There's a, a, a give option there if you feel to support us financially as a ministry. You can do that. Most importantly, there is our e-news sign-up. Sign up for our e-news if you've not done so. We'll let you know about these events. We'll let you know about missions and broadcasts and all the things that we do as a ministry. Um, if you've not got any of my books, go to Amazon. Check them out on Amazon. I've got three books, A Miracle Table, Seeing the Church, The Sound of Heaven. I know they will be a blessing to you. And also check out our YouTube page as well. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Generation Builders. Just search for that. And uh, you can watch all of these broadcasts again on YouTube the following day after their broadcast, firstly on Facebook. Tonight is a communion service, but a communion service with a little bit of a difference because I'm not going to teach you live tonight. Instead, I want to take you to Illinois to Revival Legacy Center, church I preached at a couple of years ago. This is one of my favorite communion messages to preach. We're looking at the book of Esther. Some people may think that's a, an unusual book to preach on when you look at communion. But actually, this message has helped many, many people around the world. It's a powerful message. I want to encourage you to get the bread, get the crackers, get the wine, the juice. Uh, because at the end of this message, take, we're going to take communion. And this is going to be a real powerful, powerful time together in Jesus' name. Hope that you're blessed uh, by this message. Amen. Esther chapter 5. Um, we've been having some wonderful services. Who's, has anyone been in all three services? Yes. Anyone been in two? Anyone, this is your first service with us this weekend? Okay, a couple of people. Well, uh, last night um, we were looking at the Perez anointing, the anointing of breakthrough, of breaking out. Um, the anointing um, to get violent over your breakthrough, yeah, yeah. Um, to just br uh, to have that tenacity and that determination, just to break out of that place of limitation and restriction. And the first night, Friday night, uh, that's what we, we we set the foundation that God is wooing us yes. from the jaws of distress, yes. yeah. uh, from uh, the place of restriction and limitation uh, to a place where there is no restriction and limitation. Um, and then the final part of that verse says to a table laden with choice food. Yeah. And so we started at the table and we're going to end at the table. Because at the table there is no restrictions. At the table there is no limitations. Yeah. At the table, there is limitless grace. Yeah. At the table, there is limitless love. At the table, there is limitless anointing. Yeah. At the table, there is limitless healing. Yeah. It's all here at the table. So I am so excited about what is going to happen in the next however long we got this morning. Because already everything that's been sung, everything that's been said, um, is so prophetic and leading us to a place this morning of victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a place this morning where our God is going to bring some victory this morning. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Esther chapter 5. So to... Just give a brief overview <coughs> of the book of Esther for those that maybe are not familiar with the story. God's people, the Jews, are in exile in Persia. And the king of Persia at this time is a man uh, called King Xerxes. Yes. And Xerxes's Bride. In fact, he, he had a harem, so he had, he had lots of kind of women, but there was one that would be elevated and she would be 
the bride of the king. And the bride of the king was a woman called Vashti, Queen Vashti. And we're going to touch on her a little in a little while. But uh, Vashti disobeys the king, and so she's removed from her royal position. And so the servants say, well, why don't we hold a beauty contest, and the king can choose another woman to be his royal bride. And so this beauty contest is held, and there is a young woman in the kingdom uh, called Hadassah, or uh, her Jewish name, or Esther, her Persian name. And she's actually a Jewish young girl. Yes. And she finds favor with the king. Yeah. And she's promoted and elevated, and she becomes the bride of the king. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of sermons about the the preparations that Esther went to through and how she came into the presence of the king and found favor with the king. Now while all this is going on, in the kingdom there is a devil called Haman. Yes. 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 And Haman is a man surely demon possessed whose one goal in life it seems is to annihilate the Jews. And through manipulation and trickery, he gets the king to agree to the annihilation of all the Jews. And a particular day, a particular date is set when all the Jews are to be annihilated. That's a pretty big problem if you're a Jew, right? Yes. None of the Jews have access to the king's presence apart from Esther, because she's a bride. And her cousin, Mordecai, says, you need to speak up and you need to stand up and you need to petition the king to overrule this edict and to save your people. And Esther says, well, I don't know about this. You know, I've not been invited into the king's presence. And I can't just go in. And I can't, you know, if I speak up and announce that I'm a Jew, the king doesn't know this. You know, it, it could cause a lot of problems, a lot, a lot of issues here. And Mordecai, of course, he makes that famous statement where he says, well, maybe... You've actually been brought to the kingdom mm -hmm. for such a time as this. Yes. 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 And so Esther says, right, let's call a fast. Uh, and Esther fast, no food and no liquid for three days. And she says, on the third day, I will go into the king's presence and let's see what will happen. So in Esther chapter 5, it says this, on the third day, Esther put on her royal robes, stood in the inner court of the palace and in front of the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall, facing the entrance. When he saw Queen Esther standing in the court, he was pleased with her. And he held out to her the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter. <clears throat> then the king asked, What is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be given you. Amen. Who knows, that's some favor, right? Yes. Yeah. So put yourself this morning in Esther's shoes. Imagine this morning you were in the presence of the most powerful person on the planet. And that person said to you, you can ask me for anything 
and it's yours. What would you ask for? You ever thought about it? Imagine this morning you were in the Oval Office. President Trump, God bless him, said, ask me for anything. What would you answer? Another tax cut for him to delete his Twitter account. <laughs> what would you ask for? Imagine you were in the presence of the wealthiest person on the planet. And they said, ask me for anything. I mean, get your checkbook out. Well, who knows this morning, we are in the presence of one. Yes, amen. Yes, yes. More powerful than any president. Yes, that's right. We're in the presence of the one more yes. powerful yes. than any man, any woman, any king, yeah. any emperor that has ever lived. We are in the presence yes. of the King of Kings. Yes. We are in the presence of the Lord of Lords. Yes. We are in the presence of the one who has all power yes. and all authority. The yes. one who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Yes. The one who has the name above all names. Yes. The one who holds out the scepter to his bride that gives allows her to come into his presence and says, this morning, you can ask me for anything. And it's yours. What would you ask for? Come on, don't tell me you've not thought about it. Don't tell me you've not thought about having a Solomon moment. When God says, you can ask me. Has anyone ever read that in Solomon? Yes. The thought, yes. what would I ask for? Yes. Yes. He asked for wisdom. Yes. Yes. I'm sure I, I'd ask for that. I've got a wife and Google. So <laughs> I've got enough wisdom. <laughs> And a three-year-old who knows everything. <laughs> what would you ask God for this morning? Is there a bill that you need paid? Is there a sickness that you need healing? Is there a family mem member that you need restoring? Yeah. 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 Is there a building that needs building? Yes. Yes. Is there a city that needs reaching? Yes. Is there a nation that needs shaking? Yes. Come on, we've got lots of stuff on our prayer list, right? Yes. Yes. But if God said to you this morning, what, what's number one? Out of all these things that are on your prayer list, what is the number, what is the number one desire of your heart? Well, we know what was number one on Esther's list, right? Mm -hmm. My people, my nation is about to be annihilated. Right. Save them. Yeah. Save my nation. Yes. Yeah. That was Esther's request, right? That was the thing she wanted from the king. No, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Esther didn't even mention it. This is what Esther said. If it pleases the king, let the king, together with him, come today to a banquet I have prepared for him. Bring him in at once, the king said, so that we may do what Esther asks. So the king and Haman went to the banquet Esther had prepared. As they were drinking wine, the king again asked Esther, Now, what is your petition? It will be given you. What is your request? 
even up to half the kingdom, it will be granted. Esther replied, my petition and my request is this. If the king regards me with favor, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, let the king and Haman come tomorrow to the banquet I will prepare for them. Esther could have asked for anything. But the only thing she asked for was to sit with the king yeah. at the table. Yeah. I wonder if Mordecai, he was overhearing all this and kind of tearing his hair out. <laughs> Esther, this is not on script. <laughs> you are meant to go in and plead, we're about to be annihilated, we are about to be assassinated. You are the only one who has the ear of the king. And you want to have a meal with him. <laughs> Come on Esther. That is a waste of the king's favor. Right. You can ask. You right now open your mouth. Yes. And save our nation. Yes. And you are wasting. This opportunity. This is not why you've been brought to the kingdom. For such a time as this. <laughs> You've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this to be an evangelist, to be a preacher, to have a ministry. That's what we use that verse for. But Esther, I've been brought to the kingdom for one purpose, to sit with my king at his table. See, Esther knew something. She knew that the heart of the king craved and longed for communion amen, amen. with his bride. Yeah. See, this is what this speaks of. See, this we might do once a month or once a week or whenever. But this speaks that whatever you call it, communion, the Eucharist, the Lord's table, the Lord's supper, the breaking of bread, it speaks of a, of a greater reality. It speaks of communion. Yeah. It speaks of fellowship. Yeah. If you want to get to know someone, you invite them for dinner. Right. Yeah. The best way to form a friendship with someone is to have a meal with them. Yeah. I have got to know them not through being in service. Yeah. Yeah. In service, we, we get to know each other a little bit, but the, we've got to know each other at the table. Yeah. Right. Right. Having a burger, having Mexican food, having ice cream. Yeah. That's where you hear people's stories. Yeah. That's where you get to find people's humor. That's where you get to find out the things that they're passionate about. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's at the table yeah. that relationship is formed. It's at the table that communion happens. Yeah. And Esther knew that the heart of the king longed and craved for communion Amen. with his Right. Because yeah. the whole story of the book of Esther begins at a table. Amen. Amen. Let's just back up a moment and go to chapter 1. And I want you to read, we're going to read about the king's table. And I want you to read these verses. As if they were speaking, not of our earthly king, because who knows that everything in the Bible speaks of a greater reality. Yeah, yeah, everything yeah. in the Bible speaks of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So this is really a type of foreshadowing of our king, King Jesus. And the, and, and the, the table of the king, it speaks of the communion table of our king, Jesus. Amen. So listen to these verses, verse 4. For a full 180 days, he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor of the glory of his majesty. Amen. When these days were over, the king gave a banquet, right. lasting seven days in the enclosed garden of the king's palace for all the people from the least to the greatest who were in the citadel of Susa. The garden had hangings of white and blue linen, fastened with cords of white linen and purple material to silver rings on marble pillars. There were couches of gold and silver on a mosaic pavement of porphyry, marble, mother of pearl, and other costly stones. This is not a cheap no. date. Amen. Right. Yeah. This, is a, this is abundance, wealth, prosperity. It's, it's, it's majestic. Amen. Verse 7. Wine was served in goblets of gold, each one different from the other. Oh, I love this. And the royal wine was abundant in keeping with the king's liberality. By the king's command, each guest was allowed to drink in his own way. For the king instructed all the wine stewards to serve each man what he wished. Amen. Another version says, each man could drink as much as he desired. Amen. You know, you can drink as much as you desire this morning. Yeah. 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 See, the king's table, it was a table of abundance. Yeah. Yes. You know, this morning, we have been brought to a table of abundance. Amen. It's an all you can eat buffet. Uh -huh. yes. Healing is on the menu. Amen. Joy is on the menu. Hallelujah. Freedom is on the menu. Yes. Deliverance is on the menu. Yes. Grace yes. is on the menu. Yes. You can have as much as you desire. Mm -hmm. yeah. While the king was at his table, suddenly something dawned on him. There's someone missing. Amen. My bride. Uh -huh. yeah. Where's the queen? Yeah. And this was what he heard. Vashti is having her own banquet. Yeah. So the king said, tell Vashti to leave her banquet and come to my banquet. And she said, no. Amen. Do you know what the problem with the church is? There are churches all over this land, this Amen. morning, Amen. who are having their own banquets. Amen. They're going through their song list. They're going through their sermons. Yeah. Yeah. They're going through their Sunday morning program. Yeah. And they think this tastes good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's an inferior banquet. They're yeah. there having their own yes. banquet. Yes. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And the king is trying to bring us to a greater banquet. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. called yeah. dining in his presence. Yeah. 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 And the king is saying, will you leave? The thing that you're doing. Amen. Will you leave your program? Uh -huh. Will you leave your banquet? Uh -huh. Will you leave your Sunday morning church service? Yeah. Will you leave the thing that you do, the thing that you enjoy, the thing that you think satisfies? Yeah. And will you come to my banquet? Because yeah. I have a banquet that is far greater yeah. than your banquet. Yeah. I've got a table that is far more yeah. abundant yeah. than your puny little yeah. table. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But the but but the church is saying yeah. no. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. We like our banquet. True. Yes, true. Amen. We like the food that we prepared. Yeah. The heart of the king. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Say there's something greater. Yeah. Yes. 
You see, Vashti would lose yeah. her authority. Yes. Yes. She would lose her position. Yes. And she would lose her access to the king's presence. Amen. Why is it that the church has lost her authority? Uh -huh. Why is it that the church has lost her access to speak into the nation? Fifty years ago, when the church spoke, the nation listened. Now when the church speaks, the nation laughs. Why? Because we've been content with our own banquet. But the king... Yeah. Is inviting us to the greater banquet. Yeah. 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 And if you've ever eaten at a restaurant and you've gone around telling everyone it was the best restaurant in town, yeah. uh -huh. and then your buddy said, actually, no, that there's another place uh -huh. that does steak better than that. Uh -huh. You're like, I don't believe that. <laughs> but then you've gone with him yeah. Yeah. and you've tasted. Yeah. The superior dish. Amen. The superior menu. Oh, yeah. And suddenly you've realized, I ain't going back yeah. to yeah. that place ever again. Yeah. Yeah. I've tasted that there's something greater available. Yeah. I've tasted that there is, there is food that is far better than that. Yeah. Yeah. Friends, when you have tasted the bread of his yeah. presence, oh, or when you have drunk yeah. of the wine yeah. of his spirit, yeah. There is no going back to Vashti's kingdom. There's no going back to your religion. There's no going back to the banquets of this world. What table are you sitting at, friend? What is the thing that you are dining on? The thing you think it will satisfy you. There is only one thing that can satisfy. There is only one thing that can sustain you. There is only one thing that can bring true joy and true pleasure. And it is communion with the King. Esther knew that the heart of the King longed for communion with his bride. That is why when the king held out the scepter and said, you can ask for anything, she did not mention the salvation of the Jews. She did not mention the destruction of Haman. She did not mention the, 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 the salvation of her people. Amen. The only thing she wanted was communion with the king. Yes. Because Esther knew if I can satisfy what's on the king's heart, I am positioning myself to receive what's on my heart. What is God's desire this morning? And what's your desire? Your desire might need to be to get healed. Your desire might need uh, might be to get your family restored. Amen. Your desire might be for provision. Uh -huh. The king has a greater desire. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Problem sometimes with ministries that teach prosperity or ministries that, that teach just, uh, you know, just healing or just getting stuff from God uh -huh. is that sometimes they can teach that why, that is the king's priority. Amen, yeah. amen. Yeah. But the king's priority this morning is not to heal your body. Yeah. He wants to do that, but that is not his priority. Yeah. Yeah. His priority is not to meet your need. His priority is not even revival in America. His priority is communion. Relationship. Friendship. Because yes. 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 he knows yes. if he can get you here, yes. he'll get, you'll get everything else. Yeah. 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 If you can have communion, you'll get your healing. Yeah. 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 That's true. If, you, if you can have communion, you'll get your needs met. Yeah. If God can get his church to leave Vashti's banquet and come into his presence, you'll get your revival. Yeah. Yeah. 
Is there anyone who feels the heart of the king? Yeah. All he has longed for, all he has yeah. ever longed for is communion. Yeah. Yeah. Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day. They had communion. And even then, there was an invitation. If you want, you can eat. There's a tree of life you can eat from. But they chose an inferior banquet. Yes, they did. Wow, come on. That's good. Amen. Jesus in the upper room said, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you. Amen. With desire, I have desired. Uh That was his heart. That was his longing. Say it, say it. When he was raised from the dead, Uh he didn't say, I'm alive. No, he didn't. Now, Now, here's a list of is a, a church growth program. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm alive. No. No. Here's the 10 steps to getting your breakthrough. No. No. He said, I'm alive. Get me some fish. Yeah. 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 I want a meal with you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. I want communion with you. Yes. This whole thing ends with a wedding banquet. Yeah. It all ends with a meal in the presence of the king. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, it did. Yes, it did. She wrote to a church saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. And knock. Yes, yes. If anyone, anyone hears my voice yes, yes. and opens the door, I will come in yeah. and I will suck yes, with you. Yes, I will yes, dine yes, with you. Yes, 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 yes. And when we preach that to the sinner, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Jesus is standing at the door of your heart. Yeah. Open the door. It's not written to the sinner. It's yeah. written to the church. Yeah. 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 Right. Yes. A church that said, we're wealthy. We're yeah. rich. Yeah. We're prosperous. Yeah. We're successful. Amen. But the king was on the outside saying you do not realize you are eating at an inferior banquet. You do not realize that you are wretched, naked, blind, pitiful. But I counsel you by gold refined in the fire. Put salve on your eyes so you can see. Open the door. Allow me to come in so that we can have communion together. We can dine together in my presence. Amen. Amen. Say that. Say that. Yes. Jesus. Amen. Esther invited the king to a banquet. And this is good. There were three tables. Uh Sorry, there were three seats Uh at the table. There was a seat for Esther. There was a seat for the king. But there was also a seat for Haman. See, this was no dinner for two. This was no kind of Romantic uh-huh. meal. Uh-huh. Esther said, "Make sure you invite him." All right. Because <laughs> Esther knew, I do not have. I'm just a little Jewish girl. I don't have the power or the authority to defeat him. Right. Yeah. If I can bring him to the table. Amen. We're going somewhere. Yeah. 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 You see, this morning, the thing that is destroying you, Come on. Uh-huh. Yeah. you can bring him to the table. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So he prepares a table for me. Yes, thank you, Lord. In the presence of my enemies. Esther brought that devil to the table. 
And this morning, the thing that is destroying you, you can bring to the table. You can bring your lust to the table. You can bring your addiction to the table. You can bring the thing that is destroying your joy to the table. You can bring the thing that is destroying your peace to the table. You can bring the thing that is destroying your marriage to the table. You can bring your depression to the table. You can bring your cancer to the table. You can bring the symptoms after that stroke to the table. You can bring your heart condition to the table. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. It's on the, on the next day at the table. The king said, now really Esther, now what do you really want? And she says, there is a, that there is someone trying to destroy my people. And the king said, who? And she pointed across the table. <laughs> and said, that vile thing. Yes. And the Bible says the king got up in a rage. Yes. Yes. He stood up. Uh -huh. It's time. Let God arise. Yeah. Let God yeah. arise and let his yeah. enemies yeah. be scattered. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. The king goes out just to calm down for a minute. He comes back. And Haman by this time is getting a little bit nervous. Yeah. He decides, listen to it, it says he decides to beg for his life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The Bible says before the words could even get out of his mouth, yeah. the king, the attendants put a hood over his head. Amen. And the king said, that scaffold out there, hang him on it. Right. Mm -hmm. Before the enemy could speak. Yeah. 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 You see, the, there is no answer. The, the devil has no answer to what is at the table. Because who knows that the devil loves to speak. But he has no answer to this. For the bread speaks of the presence of the king. And the blood speaks... Uh, sorry, the, the wine speaks of the blood yeah. of the king. Amen. And the enemy has no answer right. to his presence. Yeah. Yeah. The enemy has no answer to the blood. Amen. 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 Yeah. He comes with his lies. Yes. He comes yeah. with his accusations. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. But at the table, he has yeah. to be quiet. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Shame cannot speak at the table. Lies cannot speak at the table. Accusation cannot speak at the table. The negative doctor's report cannot speak at the table. It's time to hang some Hamans. Saying, 
Hallelujah. It's restitution time. Yes. I hear the Lord saying that with retribution, there is restitution. I hear the Lord saying there are things that have been held up for you. There have been things in storage for you that have been in the possession of the enemy. But at the table, I restore to you your inheritance. I restore to you the things that the enemy has stolen. There is property to be restored. There is finance to be restored. There are prodigal sons and daughters that have been in the possession of the enemy. And now the king says, I give them back to you. Esther said, there's a decree gone out that on this day, all the Jews are going to be assassinated, annihilated. Do something. This is what it says. The king basically says, look, I can't do anything to stop this. The plans are already in motion. The wheels are already set. So this is what he did. He said, I will make Another decree yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. that will be sealed yes. with the king's seal. Amen. And this decree uh-huh. has more power yeah. and more authority yeah. than Haman's decree. Yeah. Yeah. I believe right now that the, the king is making a new decree. Yeah. Yeah. That whatever the decrees of the enemy have been over your life. The king is making a greater decree. See, the Bible, Jesus said, you you do this whenever you meet together. In doing so, he said, you proclaim the Lord's death. You make another decree. You decree the power of this. You decree the power of my presence and the power of my blood. And that is a greater decree than any other decree. The enemy may have decreed over your life. Shame, fear, negativity. The, The enemy may have decreed over your life sickness and poverty. The enemy may have decreed over your life depression. The enemy may have decreed over your life all these strongholds. Uh But today, here, the king making another decree. I decree that by my stripes you are healed. I decree that no weapon from the dead shall suppress I decree that you are the head and not the tail. I declare you are more than a conqueror. I declare there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. I declare that you are a son, a daughter of Almighty God. I declare that you are anointed by my spirit. And my decree has more power and more authority than any decree of the enemy. Then the king said this, and you're going to love this as Americans. He gave them their Second Amendment rights. <laughs> See, we don't have that in England. We, that's why we don't get the Book of Esther properly. <laughs> but the king said, I give every Jew the right to bear arms yes. and defend themselves. Yeah. And so on the day which later became the Feast of Purim, each Jew took up a sword. Amen. They were empowered. Yes, yes. Because Esther came to the table. Amen. Yeah. I hear the Lord saying, that if you will come and have communion with the king, uh-huh. if you will make that your number one goal, uh-huh. if you will make that your number one priority, yeah. this one thing 
my heart longs for this one thing do I seek. Yeah. Mary has chosen what is better. Yes. Communion with the king. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you will have communion with the king, uh -huh. he will empower you yes. with a sword. Yes. 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 We've talked a lot this weekend about fighting, breakthrough, hammers, swords, breaking through, pressing through. Yeah. But it all begins at the table. Yeah. It all begins with communion, yes. with relationship, with intimacy, yes. with friendship. Yes. This is the place where you are empowered. Yeah. Yes. Jesus said, if anyone opens the door and allows me in, I will come and dine with him. Then immediately after that, he said, to him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit on my throne. Yes. Authority yes. comes after communion. Yeah. 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 The problem with many of us is that we're trying to fight the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. But we bypass the table. Yeah. We're trying to get the victory, yeah. but we bypass the intimacy. Yeah. 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 But this is where I fight my battles. Yeah. Yeah. Huh, good yeah. song. Yeah. This is where I fight my battles. Yeah. This is where I pick up the song. Yeah. Yeah. See, some of you are going to leave church this morning. And the enemy's still going to be there. Yeah. Amen. The king didn't wipe out the enemies. Yeah, the king just gave them a sword. Amen. Amen. Yes. The enemy's still going to be there. Yes. The bills are still going to be there. Yes. The cancer's still going to be there. Yes. That rebellious teenager is still going to be there. Yes. That marital problem might still be there. But this time, you've got a sword. Yeah. Yeah. This time, you've got power. Yeah. You've got authority. You've got yeah. an anointing. Yeah. It prepares the table for me in the presence of my enemies. Yeah. You yeah. anoint my head with oil. Yeah. My cup overflows. Yeah. There is an anointing yeah. found at the table. Yeah. And the Bible says that thus, I love this phrase, the tables were turned. Yeah. Yeah. The Jews turned the tables yes. on their enemies. Yeah. Oh, I believe right now it's time to turn the table yeah. Yeah. on the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. It's time right now that what the enemy meant for our destruction, yeah. God is going to use for our salvation. Amen. Yeah. That the enemy tried to bring sickness. The enemy tried to bring pain. The enemy tried to bring destruction. Yeah. But God is yeah. turning yeah. the tables. Yeah. And we're going to see victory. Right yeah. We're going to see freedom. Yeah. We're going to see hope. Right the table. Right now, Come on, why don't we stand to our feet together this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Who's ready to do some fighting? Yeah. Who's got some Hamans this morning? Right now. Come on, who's got some Hamans this morning? Right now. I want to tell you the gallows are ready. All right now. <laughs> the gallows are ready.
And even now the tea is standing up. God is arising. Yeah. God is arising over this region. Yeah. God is arising over your family. God is arising over your life. Because you have set your heart on communion. You have set your heart on his presence. There's a story of David. You read about this in 1 Samuel. He's on the run. Saul's trying to kill him. The Bible says he goes to the high priest's house, Abiathar, and he's hungry. And he says, have you got any bread? And Abiathar says, I have no ordinary bread. The only bread I've got is the bread of the presence. And David says, that'll do. bread in the presence of the high priest. Yeah. Then he said this, have you got a sword? The sword always is the byproduct of communion. Yes. Yes. And the high priest said, well, there is only one sword. It's a sword that you actually used to kill Goliath. And David said, there is not a sword like it. Bring it to me. And Abiathar said this, it is hidden behind the ephod. The ephod was what covered the, the breast, it was the breastplate, it was what covered the, the heart of the high priest. If you can access his heart, you'll find the sword. Wow. Yeah. If you can touch his heart that longs for communion, he will empower you yes. with a sword. There's no like it. There's no like it. There is no sword like the sword of the Spirit. But it is the word of God. Yes. Mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Goliath had his head chopped off by his own sword. Yes. Uh -huh. Haman was hung on his own gallows. Yes. I call that turning the tables. I call that God having a sense of humor. I say that God's showing the enemy. You come against my people. Watch what I will do on their behalf. Wonderful. Well, I hope that you are blessed by that today. Um, we're going to take communion together in a few moments. We're going to bring our Haman to the table. You know, I preach that message around the world and seen God do some incredible things. I preached this message um, in, in a church here in Yorkshire a few months ago, in fact, and uh, there was a lady in that church <clears throat> who uh, was unable to be there in person, and so the pastor felt that the message w was for her, and so he sent her the recording, and that afternoon she uh, listened to, to the message in her living room. Uh, well, that woman had been abused uh, by seven, six, seven different men as a child and she had lived with the pain and the scars from that all those years uh, she was now you know an older lady uh, but right there in her living room she brought each one of those men to the table and God just did a wonderful work of healing and restoration in her life I preached this message in a church in Norwich and and as people were taking communion demons were coming out of them a lot of people that had lived with with addictions and all kinds of bondage God just delivered them at the table. I preached this at a church in the United States a couple of years ago. And about a year later, I went back to the church and a guy came up to me and said, my marriage was in a real mess. And we heard that message and we, me and my wife, we came and we brought our marriage to the table. And as we did so, God did a wonderful, wonderful work of healing. 
He said, um, it's like being married to a different woman. Uh, I didn't get the chance to speak to his wife, but I guess she would have said, uh, it's like being married to a different man as well. But it's a powerful, powerful thing when we bring our enemy to the table. Let's do that right now. Lord, right now we break the bread together and we put our trust, our confidence in your finished work on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, your blood breaks the power of the enemy over our lives. We receive it right now in Jesus' name. Come on, bring your enemy right now to the table. Bring your enemy right now to the cross. Watch what God will do. I'm believing for some incredible testimonies from tonight's broadcast. Our time has gone. God bless you. Thank you for watching. We will be back tomorrow. Like, comment, subscribe, share. You know the deal by now. We're going to be back tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you.